OK, here's the solutions to the homework for the prelim preparation one. The first question was 18 take away 12.5 divided by 5. So we know from our bod mass that we need to do the divide first of all. So 12.5 divided by 5 is 2.5. And then 18.5 take away the 2.5, sorry, 18 take away the 2.5 gives us a finished answer of 15.5. Question. Two sevenths of one third add one quarter. So again, the board mass says we need to do the add the fractions first of all. New bottom number is going to be 12. New top numbers are 4 add 3. That gives us 7 twelfths. Now we need to work out 2 sevenths of this answer. The sevenths will cancel each other out. 2 goes in there once and in there 6 times. So that gives a final answer of 1 over 6. Question 3 f of x equals 2x minus 5x squared. And we are asked to find f of negative 3. Well, that just means that we put the negative 3 in the places where the x's are. So that's 2 times negative 3. Take away 5 times negative 3 squared. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Take away 5 times 9. Negative 6. Take away 45 is negative 51. Question 4. Factorise x squared minus 16. Well, that's just a difference of squares. So that's x add 4, x take away 4. Second one. Do not remove the brackets, so keep that as 5 bracket, 2x add 3. Factorise the bottom, it's another difference of squares. 2x add 3, 2x minus 3. Do 2x add 3, oops, sorry, it's minus 3 in the question. Hold on. Let's just do it with the 2x plus 3s because you get the same answer, which gives me 5 over 2x minus 3. OK, question 5, solve the equation. First thing we need to do is remove the brackets. So this is like a negative 1 in the front. So negative 1 times y and negative 1 times 6. Now a wee bit of tidying up, the negative y needs to move over. If it moves over, it becomes positive, so we now have 3y is less than, and 3 take away 6 is negative 3. Dividing by 3 gives us y is less than negative 1. Question 6. This was a bit of a disaster. First thing we need to do here is we need to turn this 1 over a into a to the power negative 1. And then remember the rules that when we're multiplying, that we take the powers and we add them. So, this here is power 1, and a half add 1 is 1 and a half. So when you do the first multiply, you get that. And then the second is the power of half, add negative 1, gives us a to the power negative a half. So your final answer is a to the 3 over 2 minus a to the minus a half. Question 7. Root 18 becomes root 9 root 2, which is 3 root 2s. Take away root 2 gives us 2 root 2. And the last one, determine the nature of the roots need to get it into quadratic form, which means bring the 1 over. Now, write down what your A is, write down what your B is, write down what your C is, 
and then plug all of those into the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So that's negative 4 squared, take away 4, times 3, times negative 1, which is 16 plus 12, which is 28. And then a little statement, as the discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0, you have two real distinct roots. Question 9 is a good old compound interest question. So we have the monkeys which are losing 12% each year. So 100 take away 12 is 88 percent. Turn that into a decimal, 0 0.88. We need to know what they'll be in four years' time. So to the power 4 times the starting amount, 5,000, gives us 2,998 monkeys. Question 10. This was poorly done. The mass of water on Earth is, the mass of Earth is, express the water as a percentage. So we need to make a fraction. And because the question says express the water, that's the number that goes on the top. How do you turn a fraction into a percentage? You times it by 100. So now it's all about using your calculator. Remember, this times 10 goes in the calculator as EXP. I'll let you try that for yourself. You should get an answer of 0, 0.0236%. Okay, that little dot has just appeared. Shouldn't it be there? Question 11, solve to one decimal place. So that's a good old quadratic formula. So identify what A is, identify what B is, identify what C is, and then we plug all of those values into negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. So the negative B means change the sign. So that becomes negative 3 plus or minus square root of 3 squared take away 4 times A, 1 times C, negative 5, all divided by 2 times 1. And if you follow it right through to the end, you should end up with two answers of X equals 1.2 and X equals negative 4.2. Question 12, again this is a question that wasn't done too well. We know that the length of the grids is L and the breadth is B. The question tells us that the perimeter is equal to 260. Now the perimeter of the shape is just the distance around the outside. So that means 2L plus 2B equals 260. Now we need to try and remember that as an equation. What else does the question tell us? It tells us that the amount of wire used is 770. Now if you're looking at the picture, or looking at the question, it says there's five horizontal lines, and there are eight vertical lines. So that means five lengths plus eight breadths is equal to the total number of wire it was used. We can now use these two equations to do simultaneous equations. Remember how we do them. Multiply the top one by four, which gives us 8L plus 8B equals 1,040. The bottom one we're just going to leave the same. 5L plus 8B equals 770. A big takeaway sum gives us three lengths is 270, so one length must be 90. If we know that one length is 90, then substituting this back in to, let's say, the first equation gives us 180 
two L's, two nineties, hundred and eighty, plus two breadths is two sixty, which gives us one breadth is equal to forty. So the answer is ninety and two forty. Question thirteen. The first part, calculate the area. Well, we have the formula. The angle, the question tells us, is 280 over 360 times pi times, and the radius is 25. That, on your calculator, should hopefully come out to be 1527 centimetres squared. Don't forget the units. The second part is a lot harder. We need to calculate the distance across the bottom there. Now we know that this distance is 25. It's the radius. So all we need to work out is this little dotted distance here. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use this right angle triangle. So if I take that triangle out, what do I know? I know the radius is 25. I know the angle here is 40. How do I know that? Because this right round here is 280. So the bit in the middle must be 80, so if I split it in half, it must be 40. I'm trying to calculate this side here, x. It's a Sokotoa question. Cos 40 is x over 25. Cross multiply, 25 times cos 40. On your calculator, that comes out to be 19.2. So the distance that you're looking for across the bottom, which is L, is going to be the 25 for the radius, add the 19.2, 44.2 centimetres. Nearly there, question 14. Take the 3 over, and you get 2 sine x equals negative 2, divide by 2, you get sine x equals negative 1. Now, when you get sine x equals negative 1, you should be thinking of the graph for sine. Now, the graph for sine looks like that. You're looking for the places where it's negative 1, which means where it's down here. That only happens at 270 degrees. Your all sine tan cos diagram, you can use that as well. Sine's negative here and here. Work out the angle, the the ra, the related acute angle is 90, and then 180, add 90, or 360 minus 90, both give the same answer of 270. Finishing off with one of these circle questions, we have a diagram similar to what I've got here. What do we know from the question? We know that the radius of the circle is 8. We know that the distance right across is 12, so we're going to half that to get that to be 6. Extracting that triangle, 8, 6. We're trying to calculate this height here. It's a Pythagoras question. So 8 squared minus 6 squared, 6 to 4 minus 36, which is 28. Square root of 28 is... 5.3. So we know this distance is 5.3. We know the whole distance down there is 8. Therefore, the bit that the question is asking you find D is 8. Take away 5.3, 2.7 centimetres. And that's it. You'll be pleased to hear.